uh, this is probably the most clickbaity episode I have ever released. Just stay with me. I've got something for you. I don't normally like clickbaity videos, mostly because a video that people usually call clickbait is one where the person is not able to fulfill on the promise that they make in the title or the thumbnail. And in this one, I'm promising that you will be able to write a book in a day. And I actually mean that, and I'll show you exactly what I mean and how you can do it. This is fiction, how I'm going to be using it, but it can also be applied to nonfiction as well. In fact, it would probably be easier to apply with nonfiction, honestly. So how to write a book in a day. First, let's define the word book. Okay, when I say a book, I am not talking about a novel, which is generally defined as 40,000 words or more. A book can actually be a lot shorter than that, and that is secret number one, that this book doesn't need to be a long book. What I'm talking about is roughly 10,000 words or less. Now, if you're wondering, like, well, that doesn't, that isn't a book, that's cheating. This actually happens all the time in nonfiction. You see short books all the time. Usually they have really good reviews. There isn't really anything about shorter books that people seem to have a problem with. And in fact, I would argue that shorter books are going to become more widely read and more accepted and more sought after even than longer books in the future with some exceptions. You know, I think Brandon Sanderson really has become the king of long, in-depth books. But I think he is going to be the exception moving forward that shorter fiction bites, bite sizes, uh, you could call it, are going to be a lot more of the wave of the future given the attention spans that people have and things like YouTube or other platforms where we're used to consuming bite-sized pieces of information. So while shorter books are a little less common in fiction, even short stories are usually packaged together in some way, I think that is, that is something that is going to change in the near future, especially if a lot of authors like you start taking these tips to heart. Now, why do I think this is happening? Well, first of all, it's like I mentioned, the attention span and all of that. But secondly, AI has suddenly made smaller books a lot more feasible. And the reason for this is because anytime you released a book, you ideally need to release a cover for that book and covers can get expensive. And one of the things that authors need to look out for is how to economically release books without having a cheap cover. Thankfully, with AI art being what it is, this has significantly reduced the needed price for a basic standard book cover if you know what you're doing with AI art. Now, I will caution you, there is still a lot up in the air legally and in terms of copyright when it comes to these books. Also, I do want to still make sure that we are paying the artists who do these book covers because they do an excellent job. But if you are releasing a book a day, you that is simply not economical. And so having access to an option like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion is a really great way to do that. And then maybe in the future, you could do a bundle of some kind with a bunch of these different small books put together. And that is an option for paying a, a legitimate book cover artist. Which brings me to the kind of books that you can write in a day. Now, this honestly could be anything. It could be a short story or, or a novella, something that you write down really quickly. What I found interesting is this concept of a lore book. Let me show you what I mean. Now, I originally got this idea from this article in Newsweek about this author right here. It was actually written by him. Uh, his name is Tim Bo Bo Boucher? Boucher. I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Uh, but this guy, uh, in you know, he coined the name AI Lore Book. And I found this to be very interesting. And he had 2,000 to 5,000 words and then 40 to 140 AI generated images in each book. And each of these books was meant to flesh out a little corner of the history of his little universe. They were all interconnected and talking to each other. This guy was also featured on an episode of The Creative Pen with Joanna Penn, which I highly recommend you check out. And so I thought this was a really cool idea and decided to make it work for my own universe because I actually have 
so, an idea that's in, been in my head for a little while that works perfectly with this concept. And if we go over to Atticus, you can see this is it. This is the AI cover I developed for it. Added a little bit of text that I was able to add myself in Photoshop along with this little border. And then if we go here, this is the, it's about 3,500 words. It's basically a retelling of the myth of the Egyptian creation myth featuring Ra. And it's a retelling as it works in my universe because I have this universe where all of the myths are interconnected. And I thought it would be a cool idea to show how these myths fit together in a way that would allow me to cover more ground than if I were to write this as a novel because there would just be too much for me to write if I were writing all of these myths out as full-on novels. This way I can do it in a little bit more of a bite-sized format and then use that as a way to get my ideas out and, and on paper. And then what I did after that is I added these articles that I had previously written, uh, some with AI, some without, for my website, which is about mythology. I have a website called mythbank.com where I write about mythology and um, included some of these articles which are about the original creation, Egyptian creation myth upon which my story is based. I had another article here about uh, Ra himself and then another article here about the Eye of Ra, and that's it. I had these 35,000 words or 3,500 words and then these three articles, and then I also added a little bit of artwork to accompany this. I don't have 150 art pieces like that other author had, but I thought it would be cool with each chapter and each article to include a few images generated in mid-journey to really add to that experience. All of this in total took me about eight hours. And that includes for the articles written, that includes the image generation, and that includes the Dawn of Ra, this little short story uh, that we have here. The way I did this is I plugged it into ChatGPT. We can go there right now. So this is the prompt that I used in this case although it did require tweaking here and there to make it a little bit more what I was looking for. But this went like this. You are a master oral storyteller, a genius at crafting the best tales on the spot. You have 20 years of experience telling stories that delight other readers and those who listen to your stories. Your task is to write a tale using the provided story beats below. And then I gave it three story beats in this case, but I have a lot more that I had previously jotted down. Then I would just hit enter and let it go and it would start creating this tale in sort of this higher form of speech, oral storytelling kind of style. And it did a decent job, not perfect, of course, and I just edited that out and found it to be a very pleasant experience. If you are interested in reading this book to get an idea for the output, it is actually available for purchase right now. I will have uh, two links in the description below. One goes to Amazon, but I would actually prefer it if you were to buy it from my own personal website. It is a dollar cheaper there, and I will have a link down below for that as well. So that is my formula on how to write a book in a day. I hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.